Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, another beautiful day here in the hub. How you doing? Yeah, all right. I'd say it's about 15 degrees lower than it was this time, last time we did one of these things. So I may not get crisped up quite as bad Crispy this time. Crispy Joe, right? Crispy Joe, <laughs> that's right. That's one nickname I could do without. Uh, so I think I'm going to be all right right now. How about yourself? I'm good. Uh, you know, the weather is perfect. This is like why you enjoy being in west texas this part of this part of the year is yep. because like at nighttime you can sit on your back porch you know sip a libation whatever you prefer you know and kind of have a good time i'm from the metroplex right now you don't go outside it's too humid you know even later at night and everything it's you you, you find the ac as fast as possible sure. so this is where they're going to be playing too and it's supposed to be another beautiful day come saturday texas tech takes on florida international 6 p.m central time saturday uh, the game's going to be on ESPN Plus. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, but we're going to be here, Joe. So I guess overall, what are you expecting? You know, the Red Raiders are 2-0, and but they're coming off, I mean, by everyone's um, opinion, including the, the players and, and Coach Wells I talked to earlier. Uh, not, not that great of a, of a showing against Stephen F. Austin, but a win. Yeah, and but a win. That's, yeah. that's the key clause there. Uh, I don't know what to expect. You know, I mean, with this yeah. team, uh, really, we just look two games in. We've got a schizophrenic sort of a team. Uh, yeah. They played extremely well second half against Houston. Other than that, they haven't been too shiny. Uh, you know, so we're just we're just gonna have to see what happens if they start getting some things ironed out. Uh, you know, I tell you one thing that I hope to see is what we thought we would see uh, against Stephen F. Austin, specifically on the offensive end. Just mashing these guys in the ground yeah, game. Look, yeah. you should have an advantage up front and with your running backs. Uh, and Florida International is only so-so uh, against the run. They're not terrible, but they're not great. Right. And they played Long Island and Texas State. Uh, so, and they lost to Texas uh, And they State. lost to Texas State uh, and Long Island, man. I mean, come on. Uh, so, look, I expect if Sonny Cumbie has his head screwed on straight right now, he yeah. needs to hand the ball to Taj and Xavier White and those guys. And if maybe Sir Roderick can get in uh, some carries from him as well and just run it at him. And, you know, if they stop you, fine. Then you move on to something else. Yeah. But you force them to stop that run, line up, dare them, challenge them. I don't care if they put seven, eight guys in the block, you in the box, you run it anyway and see what happens. Uh, so let's let's see some of that. I agree. You know, and uh, I, Josh Berger is one of the players who talked to us in the weekly presser here previewing the, the, the game against Florida International. And he said, like, if we have an identity right now, it is running the ball. So the offensive linemen feel it. You know, like, the players probably feel that. Like, they're a run-first team. And that's when they've taken control of, the, of each of the first two games in the second half. Yes, it was their defense playing, in my opinion, pretty dang good football. Um, and then the offense just lining up and, and breaking those explosive runs. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I think EZ is leading the country in receiving yards right now. He's been good. I know he had those drops, but ultimately he's been explosive and been a big weapon. But really, offensively, it's been Taj Brooks and then Xavier White doing some things too. So those running backs that we talked about so much in the preseason, they're actually doing it. you know. And also, on another note, you brought up Sir Roderick Thompson. I asked Coach Wells. He said nothing's changed. He's still a game-time decision, So which – I absolutely understand, even if it's Florida International, a coach saying not wanting to tip his hand, you know, but it would be nice if Sir Roger could get at least, what, five to ten touches, you know, to get ready for that Texas game if he's able to go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, and and uh, whether Sir Roger is, is able to go or not, uh, you know, obviously something that has been a bit of an issue, a big issue really, with his team so far has been pass protection, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll tell you, you know, if you can establish the run first, that solves part of that problem. Absolutely. Guys cannot pin their ears back. They're worried. They're on their heels worried about getting hammered in the running game. They're not upfield that's right. against that's your quarterback. Exactly right. So this is, I mean, that's just another reason uh, while you run the ball first. And, you know, we'll just see if that happens. Berger actually said, and I was surprised to hear this. This is one of the most telling things in the entire press conference was they're run first. He said that. We believe they should be run first. Sure. You know, I mean, they've shown an ability to run the ball. Uh, why not do that and like you said then throw off of that but we'll see we'll see if that's the game plan or if they're gonna and they have run the ball more than they throw like they did against they ran the ball more than they did against uh, than they threw against Stephen Fawson mm -hmm. so I mean that would be the argument but I just feel like you come out in those two drives you dominate you get out to a lead you have the opportunity in that next drive when you stop Stephen Fawson on third down and you went away from it and it mm -hmm. almost cost you yeah. you know right. so 
What do you want to see other than running the ball, which is I think is a great point. What else do you want to see from the Red Raiders uh, this week? Yeah, uh, to me, the second most important thing, and it's a pretty close second, is um, diversification among the receivers. Yeah. You know, look, I mean, easy is great. You know, if you got single up coverage, it's hard not to throw his direction. Sure. I understand that. But at some point, other receivers have to emerge. You're not going to make it in the Big 12 uh, just doing nothing but throwing the rock to EZ. Yeah. Uh, you've got, I mean, we know they've got the talent. It's young talent, but there's plenty of talent at the inside receiver position, and particularly on the outside. Uh, tight end. You know, tight end, yeah. I mean, a couple of really good tight ends. We haven't seen anything really of Mason Tharp. Uh, Koontz is a good player. Teeter has been in there. I think he's more of a blocker. Yeah. Uh, but still, yeah, you've got guys there you can roll out. Uh, these young guys, uh, Sparkman, Bradley, Fwangi. Yeah, I want to see Bradley. Where is Jerron Bradley? Yeah. I mean, these guys in the spring, not the spring game, but uh, that scrimmage that we saw the in the fall. Yeah. Pandemonium. They were dominating. Yeah. And, and nobody could stop these guys. I understand they're young. You're worried about them making mistakes. Uh, and you feel like you cannot afford to make mistakes, particularly when you're a coaching staff that's on the edge like this, yeah. on the hot seat. Uh, you're, 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 you're afraid of that a little bit. Sure. I get that. But at some point, it's just got to happen. Uh, whether it's sticking with your veterans, I mean, you can throw the ball at Trey Cleveland, Miles Price. Right. Uh, but at some point, some of these other receivers uh, have to start, uh, they start, got to start getting some balls thrown their way. Now, I wonder how much of it is Sonny Cumbie and how much of it is it Tyler Shuck? Because I think people forget this. The Tyler Shuck isn't that experienced. I mean, I think this, this was, he has nine starts. I mean, that is experience, but <clears throat> excuse me, that's not like a ton of experience, you know? I mean, he's still learning things to learning this system, learning personnel. He knows Eric has a comma. He knows if he throws it up, he has a good chance of easy coming down yeah. with it. So I, I, it makes a lot of sense to me that he's throwing to him, that that's the guy he trusts, that's the guy he knows. But you're right. Ultimately, for this offense really to develop, they're gonna have to spread the ball around. All right, Mighty Joe, and then finally, something I wanna see is, and I asked Coach Wells about this, you know, he prides himself on, on his program not making penalties before or at, you know, before the snap or after the play that they just they, they, they don't do that you know they did that a lot they, he said he had uh, they had two pre snap penalties and two post snap penalties that really cost them and it, it bothered him, you know and then the turnovers uh, you just it's just the mistakes uh, you know it bothered him. and I asked him like so what do you do as a coach to combat that to make sure y'all don't do that again against Florida International and he said well look it's been addressed uh, they've been talked to and he said again it's been addressed and I don't think it's going to happen again. <laughs> so I took that to mean, you know, needless to say, it's been addressed and more than just a talking to. Uh, so which is good because that's what I wanted to hear. And that's what I wanted you all to be able to hear, too, and know that they're not just blowing it off. They're they are addressing it. They do recognize that this is he said it's unacceptable and it's just not going to happen uh, by a team that he coaches. So I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, by addressed. I'm assuming there's going to be significant punishments right. for people who uh, pull these screwball plays and, and penalties and so forth. And, and I don't know what that means, but it's not going to be very pleasant. No. Uh, something uh, in terms of running, conditioning, uh, God knows what all. You don't get to go to dinner. Have you uh, ever puked on the run? <laughs> No. I know you're a runner or a jogger, but yeah. if you if you ever been in trouble like I like I did in my Uncle Rico days, you you're well aware or familiar with puking on the run. It's terrible. I have not done that, uh, but I tell you, I have done long distance running before yeah. in the past, and I know it can be extremely unpleasant. So I mean, uh, yeah, running can definitely be a form of punishment. Absolutely. Well. Uh, so give me a prediction. Tech opened as 21 point favorites. I know we're going to actually have our predictions posted, but uh, in terms of like the normal story. But what do you think? You don't have to give us a score. Just what, what's your idea? Do you think Tech wins big? Do you think it's close again? Or do they lose? Where are you at right now with Tech and Florida International? Yeah, you know, I mean, like you said, I, I really haven't uh, hammered it out exactly yet. Yeah. Where, But I mean, that 21 point spread sounds pretty close to me yeah, you know that's that's i think that's probably a pretty good number i, I agree i think uh stephen and austin got their attention it sounds like the coaches got there have been getting the players attention this week and i think we're going to see a much more focused mistake free type team i hope if not then we're really gonna have something yeah, to talk okay. about next week you know uh but I, I think you know it'll be a big win for tech in terms of starting three and oh and then going into conference, 3-0, next game, obviously big one at Texas. So, which there's already a kickoff for that, 11 a.m. It's going to be on ABC in Austin. So, 
I, you know, I'm excited to see. Hopefully, they bounce back. It's a week-to-week -week proposition with college football, so we'll see what we get this Saturday, right? Because it sure was, it was entertaining the first, the home opener. That's for sure. But with that, Mighty Joe, I want to thank you. Thanks. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.